Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another declutter. I just filmed a declutter video less than four days ago and realized that it was an incomplete list. I kind of did that last minute and left out a bunch that have either left my collection in the past couple months or are currently in the process of leaving their inboxes ready to ship out. Let's just call this part two of my end of the year declutter. I think I might have around 20 bottles here. So I'm just kind of spin through this. One of the first ones to go is a rice fragrance. And if you have, if you have followed me, you know that I do enjoy fragrances with a rice note. So I've been on the hunt to collect them over the past couple years. Not all of them worked out. Many of them were blind buys, particularly when they're affordable. So I bought the Rice Patty by Demite and it's a nice perfume it smells like a it smells like a rice patty still in the ground so there, it's a little earthy you can smell the rice it smells a little bit floral but there's definitely something like dirt in here dirt and water and earth and rice maybe a little bit of freshness some florals it does smell better on your person and also on a blotter yeah, I can get more milky creaminess here, but there's something watery about it. I bet there's like a lotus or a water lily. However, I it just was too earthy to me. There's like a note of dirt in here. <laughs> rice patty, maybe that's it. Maybe that's what they were going for. Obviously they were going for the rice patty. And to me that kind of involves it's still being in the ground surrounded by dirt and water and maybe some other greenery. So it doesn't smell bad. It just doesn't smell wonderful. Wasn't something I was looking for. I'm not looking for something that photorealistic with regards to the ground. <laughs> and I like all Demetes, it doesn't last very long. And you know, sometimes you can use these as, you can use these as layering fragrances, not one I want to layer. And it wasn't that expensive, but it's going to be going. Oh my gosh, I think I left, oh. Speaking of rice perfumes, this, He's at the bottom of my box, this little guy. Ugh. This perfume is the, oh, box almost went down. This perfume is the reason I haven't done a rice video. I got this fragrance. I got the little teeny dabber bottle from Lucky Scent, you know, beep, beep, beep. And it was fine with the little dabber bottle. And I'm pretty sure I got the dabber sample in cold weather. So when I got the full bottle of Chocoday, and I sprayed it several times in the heat. I wanted to die. It made me literally physically ill. And that's what some of these nutty fragrances, nutty green fragrances can do to me, especially in the heat. It was just like, it was almost revolting. I was just recoiled. It was so bad. I apologize if you like this perfume. I just sprayed it on a hot, hot day. And I know, I know now to not do that. So this has coconut, rice, vetiver, sandalwood, and some greenness, but what it smells like to me, like you had a coconut, you had coconut rice or a coconut rice patty, and you served it on a banana leaf, and you dusted that with cashew powder. So what I'm really, really getting is that, that banana leafiness. There's something very green, very leafy in here. It totally took away from whatever beauty could be found in this perfume. It just was like, it just ruined it. I know that there's a, a nice botanical musk in here. There's ambrette, which couldn't even save this for me. Just there is a leaf of some sort in here. I don't know what it is, but I don't like this perfume. And usually spraying a fragrance in the heat. And if it makes me physically ill, that is the kiss of death for a fragrance. I, I almost, I can never go back. Never going back with this one. I sprayed it again in the cold and it just was, it didn't work out for me. So another one is one that I bought blindly and it is by Dead Cool. And it is the layering fragrance milk. The problem with this is that I literally couldn't smell it. I mean, you can't smell it at all on its own. And when I want to give something a little bit more vanillic milkiness, I find that I just reached for something else. This really didn't help as a layering fragrance at all. It was just kind of a, worst of, a, a waste of money and it's an other parfum. Maybe other people have better luck with it, but I did not. I could not smell it literally after half an hour and an hour. If I want to have a good layering tool, I'm gonna do that through body creams, body lotions, or rarely other, or other perfumes like fresh cream, something like that. This one did not cut the mustard and this mustard's going. 
The next one is by Givenchy. It's a very nice perfume. I actually really like it. And it is Ange au Dumont Le Secret. It's a very nice tea scent. So it's kind of an orangey tea with cranberry. And it's quite lovely. The only time I wear it is in the summer. And I wore it twice in the summer and I've had it for two years. So I think in total, even though I think this is a fantastic perfume. Oh my gosh, why am I doing that? It, it's a fantastic perfume. It would be a great work fragrance. And when I smell it here, I think, this is amazing. Why am I getting rid of it? Well, I am trying to curate my collection. And if I haven't worn, if I've worn something four times in two years, it means I need to get rid of it, even though mm, I'm rethinking this. Anyways, this is a beautiful, very light, fruity, citrusy, fruity, sweet tea, sweet, fresh tea, like a white tea that I think would be fabulous for a work perfume and something in the summer. I just found that I didn't wear it at all. I wore it twice this summer, the entire summer, even though I loved it. Um, the next one, this one's tough. So I don't do very well with discontinued perfumes. I'm slowly getting rid of all my discontinued perfumes because unless I have a backup, I will not wear it and I don't wanna keep backups anymore. This is a fragrance I love. It is called Volutes. This is the EDT. The EDT was discontinued several years ago. And so I snatched this up before I even had a channel. It is a gorgeous perfume. So it is a honeyed tobacco iris sandalwood perfume that is absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite tobacco fragrances, it is a perfect honeyed tobacco, but like I say, it has been discontinued and I have the EDP and I just find that I'm just not reaching for this because I don't want to spray it. I don't want the bottle to go and I've already put a nice little dent into it. I would say if you see this, I have seen another creator here on YouTube show this bottle and I could tell it was a fake by the label and, I, and they had a link below where to buy it and it was from Amazon. So they're not making this anymore. This has been discontinued for six years. So do not buy the EDT if you see it. Even if you see it at a secondhand site, it's gonna be at least, I don't know, five, six years old by the EDP, which is different, but at least it's a current version that hasn't been discontinued and you can get your hands on it if you want to. So I think I'm going to get rid of the EDT. This is for a collector, someone who's looking for this perfume. There's a very small subset of people and this is that will be looking for this. Um, so that's that. The next one I'm getting rid of, I, I think I hinted, I hinted to this sometime this summer that part of me curating my collection is that I'm getting rid of overlap. And this one I'm getting rid of is, oh, I put it in the wrong box. This is Oriana. So this is a very nice marshmallowy orange blossom perfume. I'm getting rid of it for two, this is really nice. I'm getting rid of it for two reasons. It's too redundant. I have Guimauve de Noel, if you've been following me, I've had it as long as I've had my channel. It is an orange blossom vanilla marshmallow perfume I love and is great year round. This one's very similar. This one is in between Guimauve de Noel and Love Don't Be Shy. There are differences. This one is a little bit fruitier, whereas Love Don't, Love Don't Be Shy is a little bit more floral, but this one just has terrible lasting power. And the fact that I already have Guimauve de Noel, it just makes it a little bit redundant. So I am, tr I am trying to stick to my guns. The only way I'm gonna get a handle on my perfume collection is if I get rid of things that are redundant and I was, I found myself not reaching for Oriana and I was reaching for, I kept reaching for Guimauve de Noel, which is a great year round fragrance. Um, the next one is a, a backup of a perfume I love and I'm not doing backups anymore. I just don't want to do that. It's just, I don't want to do it. I feel like when I run out of a perfume, I run out. There are a lot of other perfume fishes in the sea, um, but it is bond number nine, New Bond Street. I bought this backup immediately because I love this perfume. I just did a video about it like 30 minutes ago. Today is perfume marathon video day. This is a milky nutty perfume with pepper and sandalwood and patchouli. It's just a gorgeous cacao nutty milky perfume that I love. And I bought a backup because I got it really a really good deal, but here it is still sitting in its little it's been sitting in this thing for over a year and I just don't need it. I don't wear this one enough. This one is a cold weather perfume for me. I don't wear it enough to have a backup. So this one is going to go by, go bye bye. I noticed my other backup of a very nice perfume, Ardent. No, no, yes, Ardent. I bought a backup of Ardent. 
It's in the cellophane and everything. I think got lost in the shuffle as I was bringing all these perfume bottles down. So anyway, it's driving me nuts. I think I left the box upstairs. But anyway, um, it's a beautiful ambery rose perfume with some saffron, a little bit of oud, some beeswax. It's very, very gorgeous and it reminds me a ton of Noir de Noir by Tom Ford. I like Ardent better and it's by Bodacia the Victorious and um, it got sold out. And so I purchased a second bottle at Harrods and I paid like $57 to ship it to me, which was moronic. Anyways, it's still, yeah, it's still in the, it's still in the plastic wrap, but like I said, I'm getting rid of all my backups. Just, they're taking up too much room and I've barely used my Ardent, even though it's, it's a beautiful perfume. Oh, it's got rose in it too, if I didn't mention it. It's a beautiful, ambery, rose, woody, saffrony concoction. I don't need a backup and I bought the backup just in case it, you could never get a bottle again, which was just silly thinking on my part. So that one's going. The next one to go is one by Outlaw Soaps. It's called Blazing Saddles. This is really good. If you like leather, you would probably love this. This is, this is like straight up fresh leather. Like if you walked into a leather goods store, that made saddles and handmade shoes and boots. It would smell like this. It also has a couple other notes. It's got, um, so it's got leather, sandalwood, campfire, and dirt. <laughs> so it's a little earthy. So it's very much a realistic leather and some earthiness to it. I don't get campfire. Well, maybe a little bit of smokiness. Very, it's, I would say it leans on the masculine side and I was gonna give it to Picky Pat he wasn't a fan of it, so this one is going. And I placed a big order with Outlaw Soaps, and when I did, they tossed in a Faribi for me. And this I will be giving to someone. They, they gave me a discovery set, so I know what this smells like. This is still wrapped up brand new in the box, and it is called Mountain Hideout, and I think it's a limited release. So basically, I'm, I'm reading off the back. This mountain smells like freedom and promise. Pine with a whip of with a whiff of campfire on the breeze. So I, like I said, I did try the discovery set. This one was a little too earthy for me. I swear, I smelled like something like a dirt note. It did smell. Sm it smelled like there was a note of earth or dirt, and. They included this cute little, they first started making soaps. Soaps, a little rubber ducky, but I am giving this away. So like I said, this is, this lane's masculine. If your person likes the outdoors and those notes would appeal to that person or to you, let me know and I will, this is yours. I'm passing it on, look how cute their box is. I'm passing along to you as, so that someone can use it. Um, so the rest I wrote down, the rest that are either they just left my house or they are in the process of leaving. The next one is Bergamot Bloom by Carolina Herrera. I bought like four or five of these at once and because I love the bottle, they're hard to find, they're pretty, but Bergamot Bloom literally is in the box in the cellophane. I mean, I opened it, sprayed it, it's lovely. Too similar to some other things I have. Um, so I never, never wore it. I wrote down the notes here. So it's got citruses, ginger, pink pepper, and vetiver, and reminded me some, something similar to light blue and neroli portofino. The next one that is going, or actually, yeah, no, it's going, it hasn't gone yet, is Mont Parfum Gold by M. Mikalef. That one I bought blindly. I love the House of N. Mikalef, but um, it just, and it's a beautiful perfume, just something about it. I think you either absolutely love it or just wasn't for you. I'm not sure what it was. I just prefer a lot of the other offerings from M. Mikalef than this one. I I know, I'm weird. I don't understand. Yeah, so it's just a preference. So it's a, I wrote down, it was, I can't even read my writing, but it was a spicy, woody floral. It's like a smoky, spicy, woody floral. I wrote down flowers burning. So I got something, I think that had ylang ylang in it. Ylang ylang and lily and rose and there was just something it's almost like you kind of lit some of the flower petals on fire and then after they stopped smoking the burned flower petals would smell something like that it just wasn't for me so that one is on its way out another one on its way out that is boxed up and ready to go is la via belle we oui. bought it blindly another another creator here said i had to have it it just 
It's pretty, no doubt. It just, with my huge collection, just got lost in the crowd. It just didn't stand out. It's a very nice, it's a very nice designer offering. I never wore it, literally never wore it. Just thought the bottle was really cute. Uh, the next one is Royal Rose Oud by M. Mikalef. Another one. Very nice perfume. I just had a lot of Rose Oud perfumes. That was more of a transitional fragrance for me. And I counted. I wore it twice in a year and a half. So just very, very pretty. As far as Rose Ouds go, it's, a, it's an uplifted one. It's a very nice one, a fresher Rose Oud. One that I would wear in all sorts of weather, even warm weather. I just never wore it and I'm sad to let that go. But I look back on my Instagram where I wore it last time and it was, I wanna say January or February of last year. The next one that's going, oh yeah, no, that's going, hasn't gone yet, is La Vie Rev by Nino Amadeo. And this is an excellent, thick, or marshmallowy orange blossom perfume. I have a lot of sweet, marshmallowy orange blossom perfumes and I don't need that many. I literally have like four or five. Oriana's going and this one is going as well. This one is a really nice affordable option for a marshmallowy orange blossom perfume. It's not a dupe for uh, Love Don't Be Shy. It's not a dupe for Oriana, but it will put you in the ballpark. It's very thick. Actually, the juice is almost like a dark brown. Very thick, very sweet, very marshmallowy. If you took Sintra, Love Don't Be Shy and Guy Mauve de Noel and you combine them, you would come up with this fragrance. So just not quite as sweet as some of the other ones. So that one is heading out the door and actually is on my Mercari page. Another one I got rid of was Sleek Suede by Yves Saint Laurent. That was a tough one. That one I love. However, all of a sudden it became discontinued. I bought it at Neiman Marcus during their big December sale last year. Oh my gosh, I love that perfume. It is. It has cacao, incense, pepper, spices, vanilla, patchouli, and oud, but a very easy oud, a subdued oud. Adored it, but it's discontinued, and I don't do well with discontinued fragrance, and I don't talk about them on my channel. So that one had to go bye-bye. I put that up, and it went like that. It literally... I put it up on Macari in less than five minutes. It was sold. So, yeah. The next one was one by the House of Siage, Emerald Rain. And another pretty amber perfume. I have a gajillion million amber perfumes. That one was very similar, more redundancy. It reminded me of Serge Luton's Amber Sultan and a perfume like a long time ago that one of my aunts wore. It was called Emerald by Cody. Actually, a pretty good smelling perfume that you can get at the drugstore. You used to be able to get at the drugstore for nothing. So if you combined those two perfumes, you would get Emerald Rain, which I thought was really pretty, and that's R-E-I-G-N, not R-A-I-N. Um, I thought it was really pretty perfume, and I love the bottles. However, curating means getting rid of redundancy, so that went out the door. Another, this is a big House of Siage purge. Another one, House of Siage Holiday. Another lovely bottle. I love a piney perfume. I'm always looking for the perfect piney fragrance that doesn't smell like a car air freshener. However, that one had so much resinous pine that it smelled like turpentine. I got a very turpentine note from it at least the first 30 minutes and I just didn't care for that. There's fruits and citruses in the top. Had those been a little bit heavier, I could have done holiday, but man on me, it just read turpentine, unfortunately. And these are all perfumes that you have never seen me talk about, and which is consistent because that's why I'm getting rid of, because I didn't wear them. Uh, the next one, another one you never saw me talk about is called The Gift by Zhivago. Oh my gosh, I love the cute. It was like a little, it's a cute like white dagger bottle that kind of sat in its little stand and it was really kind of the bottle was, it was very unique. But oh my gosh, floral musk bomb. Like if you like powdery florals to the point of like chalkiness or talcum powder, like poof, literal powder bomb with some florals, you would like that one. It's very, very feminine. Um, and I think it's gonna be a love or a hate for somebody. I sprayed it, literally, I wore it once and I was like, it's, this is not me. 
it is not a crisp perfume. So if you had the exact opposite taste that I do, you would probably love it. So, but that went goodbye. The next one that went goodbye is another one that is discontinued, Tia Zora by Guillaume. And it's a very lovely citrusy chamomile green tea with jasmine. But, and I loved it and I wore it, not last summer, but the summer before that I, I, I gave it a pretty good workout. But again, became discontinued. Don't do well with discontinued perfumes. Can't show them on my channel. Um, and I just tend to not wear them. And the last one I wrote down here, and I'm sure I've left some out, is Le Vans Trianon by Lancome. Another one that got discontinued. That was really nice. That was a lavender cookie with milk. Very, very pretty. Um, sometimes I think maybe I shouldn't have gotten rid of that one, but I just never wore it. I loved having it. I loved looking at it, and it was so pretty, and it was a really pretty perfume. I just never wore it. So I felt like it would do better in someone else's hands. And I have the last five to be decluttered. Let's see, I'm gonna choose one you have never heard me talk about. I've never worn it, and I actually think it smells good. It's by Ganache, and it's called Lemon Eclair. I've never worn it. It's a really nice Lemon Eclair fragrance. It smells lemony, it smells vanillic, it's very dessert-like. It has a strong lemon note. It's mainly in lemon fragrance without smelling like a cleaner. However, I've had it for over two years, I think before I even had my channel, and I've never worn it once. And I see it all the time, I just never reach for it. So it has to go. And then we have one by Lush. This is tough for me. Like I said before, I don't do well with discontinued fragrances. And this is one that it took a little bit of effort to track it down. It's called Smuggler's Soul. And the reason I wanted it is because it is a sandalwood based fragrance. However, I bought it when it was discontinued or when it was becoming discontinued. And I just never wore it. As you can tell, it is basically brand new. It's a very unusual, it's a lush take on a sandalwood. It has, I swear, there's some sort of lemongrass in here. It smells very citrusy. Even though if memory serves, the only notes listed are sandalwood and wood. This has more than that going on. It it's probably has some sort of lemon oil, lemongrass oil, some citrusy oil. It's very citrusy forward. But since I haven't worn it once, since I've procured it, and it is discontinued. I know, I know how I am. It has to go. The next one is another discontinued one. This is hard for me. I actually really like this fragrance, but I just stopped wearing it as soon as it became discontinued, which was last year, I wanna say, or the beginning of this year. If I can get it out of the box. It is Tom Ford Noir, and I really love this one. It's a slightly floral, like an orange blossomy, vanillic, Kolfi fragrance. It's supposed to be based on the dessert Kolfi. Well, I have spoken about the fragrance called Kolfi by L'Aromatica a couple times. That is really my preferred Kolfi fragrance. I really like that one. And since this one is discontinued, I just haven't worn it. I think I wore it one time last December. I remember wearing it once, posting it on Instagram, and then I never wore it again. So it is basically full as well and was just sitting there gathering dust. The next one is a fragrance I like. I've worn it probably a handful of times. However, it's just too similar to something else I own. And it is called, this is by Shea and Blue, and it is called Salt Caramel. It's really nice. It smells like salted caramel popcorn. And it's a fun fragrance, and it smells really good. However, it smells, or it smells too similar to What About Pop by The House of Oud. I have that one. I don't need both. I don't need two salted caramel fragrances. I don't feel like smelling like salted caramel that often. I do like the note of caramel. I, I do like to wear my caramel based fragrances, but smelling like salted caramel popcorn is, is a rare occurrence for me, so I don't need two. And so the one I like just a little bit better is it's What About Pop. So pour a little salt caramel. Once I added What About Pop to my collection, this one just didn't get worn. And I like the bottle of the other one so much better. Yes, I am that superficial. And the last one is one, this one was a blind buy. I assume just based on the notes, I was going to like it. It is by Mask Milano and it is called Mandala. And I'm a huge lover of incense fragrances. I know that some people associate incense with Christmas and I absolutely do. I love to wear my incense fragrances around Christmas time, particularly the week leading up to Christmas. 
but I like to wear my incense fragrances during the cold weather. So I'll be wearing them a lot in January, February, and to a lesser degree, March. So if you want me to do my incense fragrance video, let me know below. I think in January, my the theme for my January videos is going to be relaxation, unwinding. We've had this whirlwind leading up to the holidays, and I think when January rolls around, we just kind of take this big, deep breath and want to relax and set our goals for the next year. So I think I'm going to do the that kind of content in January. So I would love to do my incense. If you would like to see my incense video, let me know in the comments below. But mandala is was supposed to be a take on incense. It is a take on incense. It's very different from a lot of the incense fragrances I own. And the notes on the back, the top notes are frankincense, nutmeg, and angelica. The, the mid notes are cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, cistus, cedar, and incense. And the base notes are myrrh, sandalwood, oak moss, and ambergris. And the notes, it just sounded like a home run based on the notes. And it just was very, very different from what I thought it would be. Basically, this is incense and herba pura came together and formed a fragrance. And it's so it, I'm getting a lot of fruity musk, even though I just read the notes. There's no fruit in here, but it to me, comes off fruity. There's like a fruity freshness in here. I do get the spices, but it is just an overwhelming fruity, musky, salty incense. And the frankincense is very, very mild. I hardly get it. Really, I get more myrrh than frankincense. And I don't think, in my opinion, incense is the star of the show here. This just wasn't my thing. And so it was a unsuccessful blind buy. I have so many incense fragrances I absolutely love. I will never wear this one. So that one is going. So that really is the last of my 2022 declutter. Whatever else I have left, whatever else I didn't list, it will go on the next 2023 declutter. And with that, I'll see you on the next one. I'm not done. If you're interested in this little uh, giveaway by Outlaw, let me know in the comment section below. Say, I love the wilderness. And that way I'll know you actually watch the video and you're one of my subscribers and not one of these flybys who like to create multiple accounts, sign up for every giveaway and then skedaddle. I want this to go to one of my followers or a friend of my follower or a family member of my follower. So. I love the wilderness below. I'll put you in the drawing and I'll let it go for a week. So now I'm really done.